no more. <laughs> when I was a child, I spoke as a child. When I came adult, I put away. Uh oh. Let's talk about some prayer dynamics. So important to where we are. Prayer is a request to a personal God, and this personal God who answers, listen, this is important, as he knows best. Prayer is a request to a personal God. That's why God is not his name. God is a title. Anything can be a God. God translates the Hebrew word El. God can be anything. It is to a personal God. That's why God always refers to himself in the Old Testament as the Lord God. Jeremiah 33 and 2, the Lord is my name. Want to know my name? Lord, I am the Lord God. I am not just the El, I am the Elohim. I am the Lord, your God. You know, Lord, your God in the midst of you is mighty. He's not just God, there's many gods. But there's only one Lord God. We should not think that we'll always have obsessed success in obtaining the things that we in which we ask. God is not required to give you a yes on everything you ask. We as baby Christians think that's what we're supposed to get. You know, like little kids, we always think we, I'm supposed to give me everything I want. Give me, give me, give me, give me. And you know, all, all, out of time, if you're going to raise a child right, you can't give them everything they want. You're really supposed to give them everything they need, not everything they... Let me say that again. You're really supposed to give them everything they need, not everything they Because God promised to supply your what? Needs. Not your... But God, I want, I want, I want. That's where we are. He's not required. So you understand, you're not always going to have success in obtaining everything you ask for. And, and that kind of sometimes makes us problematic. We have issues with that because we think we're supposed to get everything. If we ain't getting what we ask for, we got little faith. We think it's a lack of faith. And that's not, that's not true. Maybe you're not asking right. It may need to go back to the request and not the power of God to do what you say. Maybe you're making the wrong request. Just maybe your request is not pure. So maybe God knows that you don't need what you asked him for. Remember the first principle? It's a request to a personal Lord who answers as he knows best. So it's up to him that he will give the answer. It is up to him the timing of the answer. It is up to him how he's going to answer. Because you already got a solution in your mind when you pray. Let's face it. We've all been conditioned to pray solutions. We have not been conditioned to pray problems. We pray solutions all the time. We think the solution is what we should pray because that's how we've been taught to pray. We've been conditioned, especially in the Western church, to pray solutions. You know, we want to pray for a building. We want to pray for a car. We want to pray for a home. We pray for things. You know, and those things in your mind is the solution to your problem. So you don't really pray the problem, you pray solutions. And you get upset because God didn't give you the solution that you asked for. Because you prayed the solution and really didn't approach him with the problem. Because as you're requesting, God has a request. He wants to know for everything you ask me, how is it going to glorify me? That's the question that's coming back to you. Now, if I give you this, how is it going to bring me glory? If I grant you this, what's in it for me? God, are you going to praise me more? Are you going to be more fervent with me? Are you going to, you're going to reverence me more? What is, what is it I'm going to get in return? You didn't know God thought like that, did you? Oh, he does. He wants to know what's in the film. Are you going to give me some gratitude? You, what's in it for me if I do this? 
How is it going to enhance my kingdom? How is it going to forward the cause of Christianity? If it's only going to forward your cause, so you've you got to stop thinking of, of, of God as a genie in the Bible. It doesn't work quite that way. In his wisdom, God hears and answers in the way that is best for you and him. Not just for you. Is this benefiting you too, God? You know, it's got, you got to answer in, in the way that's best for you and him. Not just, not just for you. We don't think about me. But I want, but I want, I want. And you get persistent. Problem is, be careful what you're persistent with God with. Because you just might get it. He might give it to you because you've been persistent. But you didn't need it. It might cause you more problems to get things than to do without it. And you know what we do? We blame God for putting us in the place that we asked to be in. God, why'd you let me get here? You asked me. But didn't you know? Of course I knew. But you asked me. I'm giving you what you asked for. I really want to give you what, I, what you need, but you ask. There's a real secret here that we have to get to. And this is this. This statement is so powerful. Prayer changes things. Now, that might seem like a cliche to some people, but this is, you know why this is so powerful? Because in the physical atmosphere, you cannot get anything resolved without words. Words is what resolves things in this physical atmosphere. So if you're not taught how to pray properly, Jesus did three stages of prayers in the gospel. You know that? He did three stages of prayers in the gospel. And it's so important how he did this and how he progressed. The first stage is where you guys stay at and you don't want to get off of it. So you're still on the first stage of prayer and don't realize that Jesus had progressed to a stage two and a stage three. That you really, you're still in Matthew 6. And Luke 11, when he said, when they said, teach us to pray. That was the first stage in prayer. Jesus tried to teach them two things. You got to pray his will and his kingdom. Amen. Pray that my will be done and my kingdom come. So in the present life, you got to pray for God's will to be on the earth. Because he cannot exert his will on the earth. Because, you know, you know we, we love the quote, um, Genesis 1, 26, 27, you know, when he made man in his image and his likeness and gave him dominion over everything. See, that dominion over everything is what's got you in trouble. Because you've got the dominion, God can't take charge without your permission. So I need your prayers, I need your words to release the supernatural into the natural. Because the supernatural cannot invade the natural without the natural inviting in the supernatural. I wish I had some prayer warriors. <laughs> Let me say that slowly again. The supernatural cannot invade the natural unless the natural invites the supernatural. So prayer changes everything. Prayer disrupts the order of the universe. We suddenly become conductors of nature, of energy, of the economy, because we pray. You, let me tell you how important this seminar is so important. You see all these tornadoes ripping through here? The, Romans 8 says creation groans and waits for the manifestation of the sons of God. It's because we have not been praying in warfare. That everything is just so disrupted. And it's crying out. It's like a child who is so bad, crying for attention and waiting for you to discipline them. You ever see a child just doing stuff and kind of looking at you, kind of waiting for you to tell them to stop? You feel like, I don't need to tell you to stop. You know better. No, they don't know better until you tell them. And nature doesn't know better until you command it. Oh, yeah. 
We are too ineffective in the body of Christ because we're so worried about our own personal needs that we really haven't got into the heavenly vision. Because there's something that we need to do as, as warriors. What is, what is our authority? What is, what is our job as Christians? What should we be doing? Jesus said, if Jesus is our example, he took charge of nature. He, he went on the water, and they got him in the hull of the ship. He's in the boat. He gets up and says, peace, be still. What, what calm nature? Words. Jesus said it like this. The words I speak unto you, they are spirit. Thank you. And they are life. They are spirit and they are life. The words that I speak, you got you to use your words, the authority of your words that are so important. And I'm, I'm not talking about your, your, and here's where you have to be so, so careful in what you're doing. Because the, the sin that creeps in while God is trying to get you to be used is a sin of pride. So if he gets you to intercede, pride creeps in and says, well, I'm the intercessor. Because pride sort of, I, I would call, God called me to be an intercessor. God called me to be that. No, he called every Christian to pray. Ain't nothing special about you praying. Luke 18 and 1 says men ought to always pray. It's a normal Christian duty. Don't try to be so deep. Everybody should pray. What happens is you get cooked up in pride. And pride, pride tells you, go to your pastor, tell you, well, pastor, I've been called as an ancestor. What does that mean? You want papers? You want license? You want the mic on Sunday morning for 15 minutes? What does that mean? People walk me all the time, well, Pastor, pray, Bishop, pray for me. I'm, I was called being an assessor. I said, what does that mean? And then they look at me like, I'm supposed to know what that meant. <laughs> Pastor, you ever get people looking at you and acting like, when they say stuff to you, like you were supposed to know what that meant, you know, it, me and you, you know, we got this, this code. You know, I'm, I'm an intercessor. You know, okay, well, what does that mean? What exactly is it that you do that makes you who you are. But my pride is telling me I need a title. I need to be called something, because after all, I'm doing something. So I need to be called something. That's pride. You can do it and do it well. I'm not telling nobody not to intercede. Please intercede. Please intercede for me. Pray for me. That's what you do when you're in the sea. You're praying for somebody else. You're strengthening them. And thank God, but see, you're not the one that's going to give the answer. It's Jesus. Because all you're doing, you're doing in Jesus' name. Jesus said in, in, in Matthew 6 and 10 that when you pray, you pray to the Father. Then when he progressed it in stage two in John chapter 14, he said, pray to the Father in my name. Right. See, in Luke 6, which is the, and, and Matthew 6, which is for baby Christians, I'm teaching you, this is the gospel standard. In the gospel standard, you guys are asking me how to pray. Let me tell you, pray to Father, to your Father, because I need you to get in a relationship with him first. Because prayer up to that point in the Old Testament was not even pronouncing God's name. They were so in awe of God that they wouldn't even pronounce his name. They made him so distant from them that nobody felt like they could touch God. So Jesus said, no, let's, let me show you that he wants to be a father to his children. He wants to have a relationship with you. So when you pray, say, our father. That's how you begin. That's how you teach new Christians to pray. Now when you mature, when he got ready to leave, Two years later, he says to them, now here's how I want you to pray. I want you to pray to the Father in my name. And anything you ask the Father in my name, I'll give it to you. 